Scamp the scamp. Who wants to go visit? I'd like to go on a special, a very special visit. Well, come on then. Oh, you feeling better already? You feeling better? Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Oh, Justin wants to come for sure. You want to come, Richard? Do we want to bring one more? Oh, yeah, great, me too. Oh, do we want to bring one more authentic? Okay, you can come. I know. It's too hard to resist. Come on. Come on. Oh, I can't quite meet you. Oh. Okay, where's the other girl? Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, cool. All right, let's see. All right, I'll give an update in a little bit, but we're just getting settled.
All right, everybody, you can hear me, I presume. So I have with some cat noises. Oh, Hudson. Hudson's feeling better. Clearly. Don't eat the cabbages. That's very silly. That's very silly. <laughs> Alright. Um, so... I was called in this afternoon uh, unexpectedly by the cardiologist um, saying that we could bring Sky in and have her looked at so uh, that's where we've been for the last several hours um, we do have a definitive diagnosis and prognosis and all that stuff uh, it's not what we had hoped for. So, um, the cardiologist thinks that she, uh, well, it says findings are compatible with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is, of course, a, um, a variety of congestive heart failure. Um, So what they said was that the prognosis is guarded in the short term and poor in the medium term. They did not list a they did not list long term as an option. 
we do have a treatment plan, which will involve meds twice a day for her. Um, we should be able to give her a very good quality of life as long as her meds are uh, are adjusted appropriately and um, as long as she receives prompt medical attention and, and very good monitoring. So I tried to find out more about what exactly um, you know, what is, what is medium term, what is short term. They didn't have, you know, super specific answers for me, not surprisingly, but um, they did, they did say kind of, you know, expect maybe three to six months and hope for more. Um, but, you know, prepare for three to six months and, and we just, we, we always hope for more than that, but that's, that's kind of what to prepare for with the medium term. Um, and so, uh, we talked at great length about quality of life and all of that, and they said that she should have, you know, even better, once, once she's kind of out of this episode and she's recovered from that, um, that she should have Oh, like that was a little bit embarrassing. That she should have better quality of life uh, than she has right now. Like she should feel good, and um, she actually seems like she's feeling pretty good now. She, <laughs> Justin, they're being extremely scampy, um, and so I, I, I am not, I'm not concerned for her. Um, for her quality of life at this point. Um, but I do think, of course, that at some point, what you doing? Whoever, whoever um, takes her home will just need to, just need to be vigilant about monitoring her. I'm not sure she, where she's headed. Um, So not not the report we were hoping for. Even before before they did the echocardiogram, um, the uh, internist was telling me that all of her vitals seemed really good, and you know her pulse ox was great, and um, she was even saying that you know it, it it does seem like it's an option that perhaps this was just a uh you know one incident and she she you know it's not heart disease but um it did th their um they they saw uh her left atrium is enlarged and had kind of patchy variations in thickness in the heart wall so like some areas were thicker than others which is unusual so um Really, there's not much, not much else that, uh, I mean, we've, we've done all the tests, we've gotten multiple radiology reports and two echocardiograms and multiple chest x-rays and had three different radiologists interpret them. And so we've kind of done as much as we possibly can do to get an answer. So, um... Now the question becomes, you know, how can we give her the best possible quality of life for however long, <laughs> for however long she has left? And um, just try to remember that even if she only has six months, um, they're going to be six good months. And um, even the time she's been with us has been far better than what would have happened to her in the forest. So we have Farah and Justin and Belfi and Kohler who are healthy and she's, she's known love and she's um, had lots of smuggles and so even though it's not, even though it's not what we, what we want for her, it's still a much better life than she would have had and it's the best possible outcome for her. 
Um, and so try to try to keep that in mind, um, even though it's 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 not what we humans want. Um, we will make sure that she that that wherever she ends up is somewhere where she'll have excellent medical care and monitoring and where we're all on the same page about you know suffering and you know oh you're gonna try to oh that's so adorable very sexy she's very voluptuous right now um the taurine test takes uh seven days at least to come back so we won't have that still for a couple of days but this is a different diagnosis than the dilated cardiomyopathy so um, taurine is not uh, indicated in this in this form, um, but we'll see what you know. We'll just what we have to do now. Now, kind of our short term, our short term um, mandate is to once we have her stable for 14 days, she's been cleared to. Like if we had an adoptive home that was, you know, within a several hour car ride away, we could, we, they said that that would be no problem. She does really well in the car. She's done surprisingly well at the vets too. She's, um, she's quite calm and, and confident. Surprisingly, they, none of them believe that she's feral or used to be feral. Um, so it's not super stressful for her to go to the vet, which is good. Um, she's getting better at taking her meds. We're getting better at finding out, you know, finding how she likes to take them. So I think that she really can have an, an excellent quality of life for whatever time she has left. Um, we just need to find the right, the right match. Um, I don't think flying is an option. I think, I think, uh, in order to travel somewhere, she needs to drive. Um, I think the airport would be very stressful um, and just the noise and everything so um, but I think driving would be an option so um, and and you know it could be expensive so because she'll need to be monitored she'll need to have her levels checked she'll need to have her meds adjusted um, it is likely that she will have another one of these episodes at some point, regardless of how well you monitor her. So you just have to be prepared and know what to do and have a plan. And um, ideally someone who lives near a cardiologist who can inform kind of the treatment plan and who has experience with this sort of thing. Justin's getting a bath. So that's a tall order. Um, but she's of course welcome to stay here as long as, as long as she needs to. I would love to see her in a home. I think that's by far her best, her best outcome is if she gets to go to a home sooner rather than later, where she'll have lots of love and attention and can just you know enjoy every day. Um, so um, no it's almost impossible to age to get an accurate age on a cat once they pass two that's why we we kind of like say there there are certain markers we look for when they turn when they're like around two years old and then kind of like five to seven is the next thing but um it's it's really difficult to tell how old they are and then the Gabby kittens um so we don't know. She could be much older than two. It's just, it's, it's so, it's hard to say. Um, so let's see, I'm trying to look for questions. Um, they don't know if it was a virus or a genetic. Um, we just, we don't have a lot more. I pretty much gave you all the information I have. So if you're asking me a question at this point, I probably don't know the answer. Um, we did every viral test we possibly could have done, and um, they all came back negative. But um, obviously, to have all of the kittens sick right now at the same time she was sick, um, that is not caused by a genetic defect in the sky. So 
there are certainly other factors at play. We just don't know what they are. And you know that I would love to know what they are, but there's just no way for us to find out. Um, being uh, genetic is a possibility for it. Um, it's not... Uh, we just don't know. We don't know if it was if it was diet related. We don't know if it was viral. Um, we don't know if she just, for whatever reason, got heart disease. We just don't know. Um, if it was genetic, then um, it is possible that the kittens might have some some sort of heart issue. Um, I don't know that it would be the same. I mean, they've had great nutrition, great deworming, and um, they will continue to have great care. So, uh, I that is something else um, I asked. They're gonna, she's gonna follow up with the cardiologist on a couple of questions. One of them was, should the kittens be, te should Sky's kittens be tested, and if so, when, and you know, what tests would they need? And um, so I will have more information about that. So, Yeah, I would love to keep Sky, but I don't have I don't have the time to devote to her that um, that I would need to have long term. Because Cassidy is going to be getting a surgery at some point, and I'm going to be gone for who knows a couple weeks at that time. So it's um, as much as I think she's amazing and would love to have her forever. I think there's a better option for her out there. And um, we do have a couple of, of possibilities. Uh, it's just it's it's a it's not a decision that someone can make overnight. You know, there's a lot of there are a lot of um, factors to consider. And you guys are having fun, aren't you? And uh, it's not a decision to be made lightly. It's definitely asking a lot of of a human, um, even though she's such a wonderful cat but it's um it's a very special situation so um so this room is the office that's attached to there's the bathroom um Hudson is currently in the sink now he's out of the sink um it's not a great setup for the camera because I can't it's hard for me to keep anyone on the camera Oh, she's hanging out over there. Oh, there's a bunch of kittens back there. What are they doing? They're so scampy. Are they so scampy? So scampy. Um, so that's kind of what, that's what we know. Um, they, you know, we never really get like a great prognosis that like we know anything for sure it's all subject to change and we can't really like predict anything for sure oh there's major kitten scampiness happening hi Hudson where are you going um so Yeah, so she's definitely not suffering, and um, we just have to continue to take it day by day, and once we hit that 14-day mark, um, so we have two weeks before before we're going to have to make a decision about where she goes, or if, if the perfect option hasn't presented itself, then she'll continue to stay here, but I would like for her to get settled somewhere and just get to kind of live out her life and be like comfortable and happy. Um, we do have uh, an appointment with the ophthalmologist next week. Um, I will talk to Dr. Ferguson about that because um, we can't. She she we can't have she can't have surgery. 
Um, and I, there's nothing else that could be done um, for her other than surgery. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, if we're just spending more money. Um, but we'll, I will find all that stuff out. Um, she, she's wearing the, um, camo shirt to hide her milk bar, and there's also some cabbage in there to try to, um, decrease her discomfort. Uh, she's also on some pain meds for her engorged mammary glands, but, um, she does at this point moment seem like she's less restless with the kittens in here um she can't we can't have kittens in here without the garment on because she she can't nurse them because her milk is like toxic to kittens so um she's doing pretty well with it um she doesn't seem too bothered by it it's not it's a little constricting but um you can go up the stairs but um it kind of makes her prance a little bit but i think she I think she likes being able to keep an eye on the kittens, at least for now. Sometimes she doesn't seem to want to. We just have to kind of play it by ear and try to keep her as calm and comfortable as possible. And um, Wonderful Gwen is going to spend the night, because I didn't get any sleep last night, um, with the vomit kittens everywhere. Um, Yeah, I think it's, um, I think they've ruled out the possibility that her heart will turn out to be fine. It, it is definitely enlarged. Um, there's no question about that at this point, um, according to what they, what they thought. Um, so we just, we just need to, uh, keep her as comfortable and happy and loved as possible and um, just be happy for every day that we have with her and um, be happy that she is a feral cat who mattered to a lot of people and she's I think uh, introduced a lot of new people to how wonderful feral cats are so she's very important and she has helped a lot of other ferals just by being so wonderful and so um, every every oh fair faucet good save oh no yeah uh, I don't I mean I don't think staying here is gonna be the like the best thing for her long term but if that's the best option we have then that's what she'll do um i am hoping i have i have uh we have a couple i think we do have a couple of good options um but it's it's not it's not a decision that can be made lightly and so um it's something that uh you know, with, now that we have all the information we can get, um, we just have to kind of think it over and she's going to stay here for the next 14 days. I considered, you know, would she do better in like a foster home environment, but I think she's good. I think she's, she's, she's pretty good here. So, um, so. So if you know anyone who um, you think might be up for having a very wonderful six months and then um, being able to make that decision when the time is right to say goodbye, which is not for everybody, um, send them our way for sure. Um, and we'll just see, we'll just see what what options emerge and I think um, I think whatever is meant to be for her will will come to be and um, <clears throat> I'm sort of it's not it's not the outcome I had hoped for for her but um, 
I think it's, I think for her it's, it's, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. We're going to make sure that it's good. So, let me see if anyone else, if anyone has any other questions. And yeah, they, I mean, they don't know 100%. They admit that. They just, they don't know 100%. There's no way to know 100% if it's something that is, um, I mean, they just don't know. They don't know what medium term means. They don't, they think short term is days or weeks. Um, you know, they don't know that, they don't know that we, we like, re how hard we fight for miracles around here. But um, we have gotten more than our fair share of miracles. And so... Um, I think the fact that she even made it home from the ER that first time is, is a miracle. The fact that she's walking around and she's happy and she's comfortable now is really more than we could have hoped for at that point. So um, there are just so many different opportunities that she's already had where she, should, she shouldn't be alive right now that, um, that I think every day with her is pretty special. So... Um, yeah. So sorry to be like Debbie Downer again. Um, at least we have we have some we have good information now, and um, we can now that we have now that we have as much information as we can get, um, we can make we can make a really good decision for her, and I'm I'm very confident that that we'll be able to do that. So um, Gwen is gonna sleep over because she's wonderful. Um, so we'll see what, uh, the camera will probably be on the kitchen room. Um, there will probably be some kittens in here for a period of time at least. Um, I'm not sure. Um, we got a sweet too. She's so, she's kind of like punk rock right now. She's a little bit punk rock. What you doing? Justin's a mama's boy. But she she does seem, uh, she's less uh, anxious right now. That could be the pain meds that I gave her kicking in. Um, I did give her pain meds for her milk bar. So thanks again to everyone who's been um, supporting us and thank you for the donations it's it's um definitely been expensive with multiple nights in the er and specialists and we actually in order to get a, the, the appointment with the cardiologist we sort of had to um what uh we had to kind of go around the system and admit her through the er and then um we were able to see the cardiologist today as opposed to having to wait um another week for an appointment so um, but it, it did cost a little more to do that, but I think it was the right thing to do because we just needed to have some answers. So, um, now that we have answers, we can, we can proceed and let it kind of sink in and no pun intended. And, um, you guys know that even though this isn't what we hoped for, we don't, we don't ever stop fighting and, and we will always fight for a, a happy ending for her, even if it's, you know, even if it's sooner than, than we had hoped, it's still going to be a happy life for her. So I hope you can take some comfort in that. Um, I, I am trying to take comfort in that fact because that is, that's important and it should mean something. So... Um, thank you again. I'm going to switch back over to the kitchen room and uh, I will keep you posted and good night for now.